And now, the Sleephawk Worldwide Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brandon Staten and Tyler Hensbro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sleephawk Worldwide Podcast. This is Sleep Dog with the Big Hulk. What's up, everybody? It's the Big Hulk. Uh, excited to be with my guy, Sleep Dog, in the lab, bringing a great podcast. Uh, wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Uh, let's go, Sleep. Thanksgiving week, guys. This means ain't nobody doing shit at work. So hopefully uh, we'll see some of that and uh, reflect in our viewership here. We're a uh, uh, basketball school now. We're going to cover the loss at Clemson and all the you know things that went wrong there. And I mean, there's no sense really in evaluating where our season is now because uh, my, how far we've fallen. But nonetheless, here we are, 8-3. and three. We'll chat about that game at Clemson. Basketball, different story, looking pretty good, trending up. Uh, had a couple W's, going to get tested here down there in the battle for Atlantis. And then when we come home, it's got a good stretch of games coming in basketball. We'll get into that. Touch on a little NFL. Might run through the scores here. Chiefs and uh, Eagles playing as we're watching. So far, that's a big dud. 3 nothing as we came on here. Uh, Joe Burrow out for the year. That's a bummer. Zach Wilson, bummer for him. Good day for Jets fans. He's uh, just got benched and... Uh, a few other storylines in the uh, in the NFL, and we'll touch on a little Thanksgiving, but we'll start with basketball. All right, let's start in a happy place. All right, uh, Carolina seventy seven something over uh, fifty two, UC Riverside seventy seven fifty two UC Riverside. You know, I was coming on before. Watch the game. I test team looked great. Look at the team stats. I was like, we got out rebounded, got out assisted. You know, didn't demonstrably. You know, outstat them. Um, but I thought we looked good. Um, you know, kind of a weird game given the statistics versus, you know, the eye test. But, uh, you know, what'd you see, Big Hawk? And, um, you know, how does that kind of thing, you know, and then also, you know, talk a little bit about some of these sort of early season tournament formats where, you know, we talked last pod about kind of getting out of that rhythm a little bit with, 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 breaks and stuff coming in classes and now all of a sudden these guys I'm, i can't remember where you played while you were there but now these guys are down in the bahamas playing three days in a row so mm-hmm. you know talk us through that part too first of all it's a great week for college basketball you got a lot going on we got maui going on uh you know i'm glad that after everything that hawaii has been through i'm, I'm glad that uh they're able to get back to Maui this year. It seems like it's a staple for college basketball. Uh, There's going to be some exciting games, a lot of basketball we can watch. Uh, obviously, the Tar Heels are down in the Bahamas for the Battle of Atlantis. We will be tested there, so there's going to be some good games uh, played there, but we'll jump right into it. UC Riverside, uh, the stat that sticks out to me, obviously there's not a lot of statistics that really show you know, why this game was so lopsided outside of uh, field goal percentage. UC Riverside shot 30%. It's tough to win ball games doing that. We shot 45%, which is a big stat for us. Uh, we've had our shooting struggles in the past, especially last year. Uh, we seemed like we hemorrhaged more contested threes than any other team in the country. But it looks like with our new style and the change of system that Hubert has brought along, that we are running and getting high quality shots, which is a big value. And also, it's what uh, traditional Carolina fans enjoy watching. We enjoy watching the up tempo, up and down games, and the scoreboard starting to reflect that. Although we didn't put up a lot of points, uh, you know, seventy-seven against UC Riverside. You know, me and Sleep Dog, we want to see that into the triple digits. Okay, we want to mm-hmm. get everybody, you know, to Bojangles out there and getting the discounts. So um, it's uh, it was a big win, three and zero. UC Riverside isn't. Uh, you know, it's not a dominant force this year. They were one and three coming in. They left one and four uh, leaving. But uh, the one thing that I will say, you know, even though Cormac Ryan uh, didn't have his best outing, he is a super uh, valuable addition to this team. Uh, I think he's a great leader. He does a lot of things uh, that doesn't show up on the stat seats, which is super important. Running the floor, moving without the ball, he does really well. He is 25 years old. He's been playing college basketball for five years, so you hope somebody that has that veteran experience would do those things. But also, Harrison Ingram uh, has come in and really provided a spark for this team. He's a guy who is 
continuing to play multiple positions like we talked about before the season and adding a whole new dynamic. He's one of those guys that where we could go small. At times we saw him play the four, play the three. Heck, we could even see him play in the two. I'm not sure we're going to get it to him uh, you know, playing the one unless we have some injuries. But he's been a great addition. You know, he's been a consistent scorer. Even though he only had 10 points, he still had nine rebounds. And uh, that was – when we get somebody else dominating the boards besides Armando, that's going to be huge for us. And also it's going to take a little bit of pressure off from Armando. But, you know, Mondo's continued to have, you know, big games, 21 points, seven boards, uh, even though, you know, as Carolina fans are like, ah, seven rebounds. I mean, Mondo's just been so good. Um, these past years that we just expect him to have a double double, especially yeah. uh, since he's been in college since uh, you know BC. But uh, I thought he was really decisive. You know, like he was getting the ball in the post and just you know. And look, man, you're playing UC Riverside, fine. But there was there wasn't any thinking about it, man. They get in the ball and immediately he was he was making a move in the post, and I saw him do yeah. that on a, on a couple plays. And it was, I don't know what it was about like that level of aggression to me is like, he just absolutely knew he was better than whoever was, was defending him. And he was, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was good to see that because I felt like, you know, sometimes people maybe get mired into the, the footwork or the post moves or whatever. And sometimes your, your most effective play is just go at it. Right. And I felt like he did a good job of that. Well, and with the running, uh, you usually see, you know, as when Coach Williams was, was, was here, you would see the bigs for Carolina. Listen, bigs for Carolina have had, you know, even if you look at Coach Williams, Kansas's teams, you got Nick Collison, Drew Gooden, uh, you know, a ton of players, Leifer, mm-hmm. Ray, Ray for France, uh, who did it really well, a ton of good bigs. And the reason why they do that is because they're able to rim run and get mm-hmm. a good deep ceiling position. And when you run like you do at Carolina, it doesn't allow the defense to set up. So a lot of times Mondo is catching the ball in great position where he doesn't need to put the ball on the floor and help side. And he's not allowing himself to get double teamed, which is a huge deal. And also, uh, one of the best players uh, a lot of Carolina fans would remember is Sean May was a great duck in player. And Sean May, to me, uh, probably had the best hands of any big man at, to play at Carolina. He had great hands. And Armando mm-hmm. has improved his his hands throughout, you know, from his freshman year to where he is now. But also he's improved his body and he's he's, uh, you know, gotten much stronger and he plays through contact much better. But he doesn't have the hands that Sean May has where it just seems like he was able – Sean May, if he got his just just a finger on it, it he was going to get that rebound. Mm-hmm. I don't think his hands are soft as Big May's, but he does have good hands around the rim. He's able to get a lot of tip ins and you know get his rebound very well, which he does. But you're right, Armando's putting himself in much better scoring <laughs> position, which last year when we watched, I thought a big flaw of this team was – we felt the need to get the ball inside, mm-hmm. but we would just pass the ball around the arc and just look at Mondo, try to just bully some guy down low. That's not – got to be able to move and then spin and get those deep seals and then cut those angles on that defender to allow yourself to get in good scoring position. And also the guys have to move off the ball to allow – uh, Mondo to kind of work and get those angles as well. So it's all connected, but Mondo is doing that much better. And also with our running style this year, we don't have to rely so much on Mondo. I think Harrison Ingram is one of those players mm-hmm. that's come in and provided that extra scoring lift uh, to help this team. So that's going to be pit, you know, big going into the future. But, you know, sleep, as we look, we haven't been tested yet. And right. we're off to a good start. In this battle for Atlantis, there's some good teams in this. When I look at the list, you know, of teams that are going to be in the Bahamas, you got Northern Iowa. That doesn't really strike me as being battle tested right away. Uh, we should win that game. Uh, ESPN has us in their winning percentage. Uh, I think the winning percentage it gives like Northern Iowa an 18% chance of winning that game. So I, I would feel pretty safe saying we're going to beat Northern Iowa. But if we beat Northern Iowa, we're going to face either. Uh, the winner of the Villanova and Texas Tech game, that would be a good gauge. I think that would be an up in our competition. But also you have Michigan, you have Memphis, you have Arkansas. Arkansas is well coached. And mm-hmm. also 
Arkansas has an NBA player who was hurt last year who set out. His name is Travion Brazil. He is extremely athletic. He's a 6'10 guy. So if that matchup were to happen, I would love to see Travion and also Mondo go at it. That would mm-hmm. be that would be a marquee matchup for college basketball, and I'd be really excited for that one. That'd be a good test. But also they have Stanford, and everyone's familiar with Jared Haas, who coached at uh, UNC when I was in school, went on to be the head coach at Stanford, doing big things. So that would be an interesting matchup, but they would have to meet in the finals for that to actually happen. So there's going to be some good games, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, looks like they tip off on Wednesday at noon Eastern. So I'm, I'm excited for some good basketball coming up. Yeah, absolutely, man. There's a lot of, uh, <clears throat> like you said, it's gonna we're going to get to find out pretty quickly. We said this back at the beginning when we were previewing the season. We'll find out pretty quickly who we are because we've got a lot of good games. We come back home, have, have Tennessee at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we play Kentucky later. Uh not long after that. So you got Florida State is, um, you know, opening up the conference schedule. So in a month of December is a slate full of, uh, you know, of tests for the Tar Heels. So we're going to find out, you know, real quick. And, and all indications we have right now are pretty good. I'm going to back up one, uh, you know, one sec to the Riverside game because the stat line that really kind of jumped out to me, there are really two of them. And I'll, I'll save the best one for last. But uh, Seth Tremble in just 16 minutes. Had eleven points. He was five for seven. You know, I didn't, I didn't catch the entire uh, game, but what that tells me is, uh, you know, he took some, took some good shots. Uh, but the Jalen Washington stat line, you know, if he only he had eleven in only thirteen minutes, four or five from the floor, hit two threes, and grabbed five boards, had two blocks, didn't turn the ball over. Neither one of those guys turned the ball over. Uh, yep. I don't think. Yeah, and you know, I think a lot of people are. Uh, a lot of UNC fans are, you know, really, really hopeful that we get to see a lot of Jalen Washington. He just strikes mm-hmm. me, strikes everybody as the type of guy um, that's that can be a great college player. I think it was nice to see as you go through, a lot of guys got double digit minutes. Um, but why do you think? Why do you think Washington? What do you? What does he still need to improve to get more minutes? Well, I think he's in a hard position. He's backing up Mondo. And mm-hmm. in today's game, it's kind of – it's almost prehistoric to have two bigs. And even though I, I'm a big – you know, listen, I love two bigs. I love going big. Mm-hmm. You dominate the boards. I think there's a lot to be said there. Um, but I think the thing with Jalen – also, Jalen's been hurt a little bit. I think he's dealt mm-hmm. with some injuries. Uh, it's kind of put him behind the eight ball. Listen, he came in here. Uh, with a knee injury his freshman year, which is difficult. Didn't really have uh, much of a preseason. But last year, when he did burst onto the scenes, Mondo was hurt. He was out, and I think he dropped 21 at Virginia. And then all of a sudden, Carolina fans got excited. He's been a little inconsistent, but you will not find a bigger believer in Jalen than me. I think Jalen mm-hmm. has great touch. I think he could be a great shooter. He could also be a good stretch four. He's one of those guys who could play four or five. He's got great length. Uh, he's got good soft hands. He's skilled. Uh, I think he just, you know, once he improves his body and he finds a way mm-hmm. to stay healthy and get, gets his confidence, I think he could be a big-time player. And uh, the other thing is you brought up Seth Trimble. And I think Seth Trimble had some spurts last year where we all started seeing, you know, little clips of, oh, hey, mm-hmm. man, Seth Trimble could be pretty good. The one clip he did, he had that breakaway dunk, and mm-hmm. that was spectacular. <laughs> Highlight play, yeah. extremely athletic player. And I do expect Seth to be a big part of this team this year. I think he's going to be one of those players that we can rely, uh, you know, coming off the bench. But also, it's good to see these guys getting minutes because. You know, I, I would say last year and the year before that, we've played our starters so much that late in the season, mm-hmm. it's just like mm-hmm. they were run down and, you know, we we're plagued with injuries. And then all of a sudden you start relying on your bench. Well, these guys haven't had much experience. If you don't play them early right. in the year and you expect to rely on them after injuries, you know, in the middle of the year in conference play, it's kind of hard to do that. So you got to find a way uh, to get your bench involved early and try to get a rotation going before you get into conference play. And it looks like Hubert's made that adjustment. That's going to pay off for us big, uh, I would say, later on down the road. Yeah, because that's one of the things where um, I uh, 
I think is going to be interesting about the team is right. We talked about this is, you know, these guys, even though Mondo, you can really count on him, even though RJ, you can really count on him. these guys are going to have an off night at some point. Right. And in college mm-hmm. basketball, it's all about, can you have a guy to step in and fill that void? You know, and I think yep. you have a lot of depth and sometimes depth doesn't necessarily mean, um, you know, guys getting tons of minutes. And I asked yeah. the thing about Washington, I think, because most fans really, really like him, right? He's a high, highly mm-hmm. recruited. Uh, he's got obvious, you know, you could just look and he's got obviously, uh, you know, the skill set and the sort of the body frame and everything that, that you want to see uh, from a college guy. So, um, you know, and then, of course, I guess, you know, you also have to worry as a fan, right, is like these days – if a guy like that doesn't get minutes, like, is he going to stick around? And yeah. so um, it's just good to see him being productive because I, I, I don't know. I really like that kid. And, and I, you know, I think uh, I'm not, I'm not asking the question about why he's not getting minutes as some sort of indictment no. on him or, or a question, but that. it's just, you know, I think most people, you know, are curious about that, but yeah, so far so good for the heels. Talk to us next week. Uh, by the time we record this next one, we uh, might be in a different state of mind. You never know. That's why you play him. But, uh, you know, so far so good. So, um, hey, first of all, uh, yeah. Jalen's a great kid too. He's a hard yeah. worker. Uh, he's one of those gym rats. Sometimes I'm down at the Smith Center at odd hours, and uh, Jalen's down there working on his game. I got a, I got a lot of confidence in him. And sleep, I know you weren't taking it like that, but uh, I just want to say to all the Carolina fans out there, he works hard. And he's a great kid, mm-hmm. and at some point, it's going to pay off for him. And uh, I hope he keeps working and keeps his confidence because he's going to be a big time player at some point. Yeah, we're going to be excited to see it. Well, I've got my eye here on uh, 43 seconds to go, Big Hawk. Guess I'm who's watching down it one. too, Sleep. <laughs> Are you watching it? Oh, I'm God. not watching hey, guys. it. I'm going to turn this thing off my iPad here. I'm trying to keep my, like everything going on here, but damn, Big Blue Nation is going to be beside themselves with this shit. Going guys, on. hey, me and Sleep do not like Big Blue Nation. If you say something negative about Kentucky, mm. the, all your your inbox will be filled with hate and just unbelievable responses. And uh, they also blew a 14 point lead uh, to Kansas late in the second half uh, last week. And uh, I went on the field of 68 uh, on Stadium, guys. It's a great you know they do uh, great coverage of college basketball. If you haven't checked it out. Uh, every night after dark, they do a show. Check them out on Twitter and go to their YouTube channel, whatever. But uh, they asked me where you would rank Kentucky, and I said top 50, and people were just floored. <laughs> and oh, I, I'm just man. finding subtle jabs just throw at the Big Blue Nation ever since they've come at me. Ridiculous. Um, uh, they're completely irrational. I was trying to find it. They're on, it's on SEC Network. I definitely don't subscribe to that, so I'm watching it here on the little – little game cast here on my iPad. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just – I mean, look, dude, Carolina fans ain't exactly the most, like, oh. stable stable bunch. Did they score? Yeah, they had a put-back dunk. All Not right. to win it, St. Joe's, right? let's do this, man. Come let's on, go. St. Joe's. Who was St. – who was the dude that played for St. Joe's back in the day? They had that coach, the ball Devontae guy. Devontae West played for him. Uh, he played in the NBA. Nah, they that's had, not who uh, I'm thinking about. Jameer Nelson. Jameer – Yep, Jameer Nelson yep, played that, for him as Jameer well. Jameer Nelson was good. Uh, yeah, anyway. And so let us know. And one? Sorry, no. He just fouled him. Sorry, guys. No. I can't watch this game. <laughs> I know. We're, um, I have, all I have is my score hasn't changed on my my iPad. I've got like 700 scores up right now, uh, NBA and otherwise. I'm trying to I'm – tr- guys, I'm trying to keep you guys out of the NBA, but we'll probably get there at some point. <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's just get to the inevitable. Carolina football loses to Clemson at Clemson, 31-20. Didn't really seem like it was that close. I'm going to say it, all right? We lost that game. But they were that, that roughing the passer call in the first half. So I don't know if you saw it or not. But I think it was fourth down. Clemson goes for it. We stop them. They throw a blatantly bad rough in the passer, give Clemson second chance, eventually score, um, and it changed the entire trajectory of the game. 
because late in the game, like some of the mistakes, like Drake May got picked and, you know, a few things didn't go their way. But those things were all it was. It was a close game. Right. And, and their hand was forced. You take those seven points off the board. And then later in early in the second half, there's a blatant P.I. on Tez Walker. I mean, you just can't miss that call. So so that right there. And I mean, that's a short almost touchdown. I mean, I mean, I, don't, I won't call it a short touchdown because he might not have scored on that play. And you don't score on that play. It's not a sure touchdown, but it's points on the board, 10 to 14 points on the board that were taken off and in some case given to, you know, Clemson. Look, man, we made our own bed. We, we, we had some really questionable timeouts, clock management. We had some questionable going for it on fourth downs. Although I could understand the going for it and taking more risk because Louisville had already clinched ACC earlier in the day. So I, I can respect the fact that you're like, dude, we're just going to try to win this game. And, you know, we we ride the refs a lot, but I hate blaming them. <laughs> I just I just couldn't get over those two calls because those, those were those were game changing calls. Yeah. And, you know, you're on the road at Clemson. You know, tough place to play, conference opponent. Like those calls can't happen because it's already hard enough to win at that place. You know, yeah. for anybody, and to have to win in, in <clears throat> with, you know, in what's obviously going to be a close game with points getting taken off the board, dude. I mean, it was it was it was frustrating. Kind of like Sleep. kind of like the heel season. One of my least favorite sayings is the refs can't lose you a game. That yeah, goes, not true. The, the refs, the refs can certainly lose you the game. They can change the momentum, change everything. A couple bad calls can lose you game. Games are so close in college football, basketball, professional sports. Mm -hmm. One or two bad plays can absolutely uh, lose you yeah, a game. Tell Tim, Gun Black, Tim Donnie you can't lose you a game. Absolutely, and uh, you know it's ridiculous. But uh, you know, in in their defense, you got to expect. At Clemson, you don't you don't walk in there thinking you're going to get a lot of calls. Sure, you just sure. don't. And uh, you know we haven't won there in a while for a reason. And yeah. they're tough at home. You know, as much as uh, you know, I don't buy into Dabo's whole antics and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. And as bad as I wanted the Tar Heels to march in there, Drake May just to toss it up and down the court, all up and down the field, and just leave there with the big W. It just didn't happen. And uh, it also seemed like we lost a lot of momentum uh, yeah. coming in there with a couple losses. But, you know, there's still some still some games to be played. And uh, we actually circled this one before the season. Hey, we may lose this one. But, you know, it, it was close. And, you know, bad calls can change the momentum, especially that Tez Walker mm -hmm. pass interference. Could have changed the outcome. Who knows? But uh, it is what it is at this point. It's scary to think. I mean, NC State is ahead of us in the conference schedule. I mean, neither one of us can make the tournament. I mean, the, the the championship game. But now we're going in there Friday at NC State, and wouldn't that be, you know, we got to win that game. That you know, the common question in in sports is everybody says, is this a must win game before like other than a game seven, which is obviously a must win game. Most games aren't must must win. This is a must win game. Now, I, it's not a must win game for Mac Brown. I mean, the, these people that are that are asking questions. I said this before, dude. Mac Brown's a coach, and I mean, you, you, look, disappointment and and delirium are two different things, right? Yeah, yeah, are we disappointed? Should we be disappointed? Yeah, we we had high hopes, but this this team's been in the top twenty five damn near all year. Right, like I mean, we Mac Brown is the coach, and he's yes, a good coach. He's a great and coach. There's, 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 you know, like I've said before, if you tell me something about Gene Chizik, offensive coordinator, or Lindsey is a, I mean, defense coordinator, and Lindsey is offensive coordinator. Look, man, there's, there's many, many people that can make better arguments than I can. <clears throat> I got questions just like everybody else, but I'm damn sure not smart enough to have a super informed opinion on what it takes to be successful. It's just, you know, you got to remember, too, that a lot of Clemson's going to recruit a lot better players than we are. And that's just the fact of the matter. Now, we're getting better at that. And without Mac, you look, my always question to the, to the coaching people is like, who else are you going to get? Right. Like, who else are you going to get? So that part, forget it. But you lose this game in NC State after like after the shit they pulled last year. 
and and how embarrassing that was. And after the how they started and how we started, it's a nightmare scenario. If you can't get the team up for this, and this is what I can, this is what I'm concerned about from North Carolina's perspective. Look, man, I don't care what bowl we go to. Half those guys that are going to the NFL, and there's several of them on offense, ain't playing. Nor should they, right? As a fan, you want them to. It seems like Drake's the kind of guy that will play in a bowl game, but he shouldn't. You know, if he's going pro, he should he should sit it out. Too much to yeah. lose. He's done enough, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Sam Howe played in the bowl game, if I remember correctly, right? And it's yep. just like appreciate and respect the hell out of that decision. But if it's me, I ain't, I ain't that, I ain't that altruistic, dude. I'm getting, I'm, I'm looking after me. Yeah. So you know, all that is to say, this is it. This is it for this team, for for fans, for the team, for the school, the program, whatever. And go in there, beat the hell out of NC State, and all's forgiven, man. Like nine and three, mm-hmm. fine, yeah. dude. Just outside the top twenty-five. Played some, you know, the, the 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 crazy part about that, look, you lose at Clemson, man. A lot of people go lose at Clemson, right? Yep. The crazy part about this season, the story that'll be written is like, man, what about those other two? You know what I mean? Like you could have mm-hmm. it could have been 10 and 1, 12, 11, 12 and 1, whatever the hell it winds up being. But, you know, whatever, dude. Like the Clemson game doesn't upset me very much. It was at least the band-aid had already been ripped off. You know, Louisville had already clinched it. So, so that was a done deal. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but this is absolutely must win for the Tar Heels Friday yep. in Raleigh. Listen, we can beat NC State and talk a lot of smack. Those, there's, you won't find a more annoying fan in ACC sports than a, than a Wolfpacker. And listen, I've, seen them more delirious big blue nation basketball or nc state football i don't care if it's if it's a chess club and unc (laughs) playing uh nc state i want to dominate them and that Uh, would just be an easy blow by because we would absolutely destroy nc state anything academic wise but oh i will say this um Engineering school, great place uh, for engineers. Yeah, but uh, I will say this, man. Hey, we're not going to find a better coach than Mac Brown. He's a Hall no of Fame way. coach. He's won the whole damn thing. Uh, you know, at Texas, he, he's a great coach. Uh, he's done a lot for the program as well. And also, there was a lot of steam coming here. He's done some big things. So I'm happy, and we're also lucky to have Mac. I just want to yep. keep that in everybody's mind. Four, as well, but, four active coaches have won a national championship. Mac Brown's one of them. Yep. Great coach. I'm glad we have him. I wouldn't want any other coach out there. And there's no other better op. There's not a better option guys. So, and we're lucky to have Max. So I'm excited. He's on the sideline. He brings in a lot of good recruits. Uh, You know, it's not easy to turn around a program either, which I I think we're heading in the right direction as well. And this is something that, that like here, here's an interesting thing. And I thought of this over the weekend, The teams change, right? So, so everybody oh, yeah. thinks that with the team, there's turnover, there's new players every single year. So, like, whatever the stigma is, whatever the monkey on the back is, everybody says, well, this is a different team. And coaches say that a lot. It adds, it has to add an element of pressure to kids when they know that their predecessors have failed to get over the hump psychologically it's weird because like if it's <clears throat> if you're would you guys go out in 08 in that Kansas game in the final four yeah, and that was lost. when you, yep so, so so like imagine you know that happens and then the next year you know there is there are the questions of like all right man can they get that monk now now imagine something like that happens two or three years in a row right now now okay mm-hmm. this is the same core unit that's understandable, but I don't think many yep. people realize or, or, or think about the fact that the stigma that exists over the program can still have an impact on guys. I mean, because you look back and people say, well, for this is Carolina football. That's what people say is every year for, for the last however many years since Mac Brown was here the first time, every time we've had a good thing going, we figured out a way to screw it up. Okay, that is the narrative. Well, I mean, what the hell does Drake may have to do with – I don't know who the who the hell the last guy was. T.J. Yates, right? I mean, I don't think we were very good back then. 
But you know, don't forget old Mitch. Mitch, right? I mean, Trubisky, Sam, he was, oh, Sam's, yeah. Sam's team, right? Like they, they had a great, great Cam thing Sexton. going and they fell off. Cam Sexton, shout out. Um, my point is, is that it's naive to think that because there's a new crop of people that the narrative goes away in college sports, right? The, the teams, you know, uh, and, and I would, I would think that, that that's a challenge for basketball too, right? Is like, Hey, man, like, they haven't been as good as they were supposed to be for a while because you have to do in college sports. The best teams are the ones that when they go out on the field, on the court, they know they're the best team. Like you look at guys like Georgia, Alabama, like there ain't no question marks. Like these guys aren't making like, like they're not freezing under the lights. They're like, dude, this is why I came here. And it's, and that's long been the narrative of basketball at Chapel Hill, but it feels like football. Right when the when the when the moment gets big, the guys seem aware that there's that monkey on the program's back, and sometimes, you know, you see turnovers, you see drop passes, you see penalties. We've seen it all, and uh, so anyway, I mean, I just think that that's something that's you know worth worth considering. And if I'm Drake May, man, I just come back next year, I just run it back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I would love uh, to have him sleep. Oh I don't my know. god! If, Could you imagine? Uh, t- I don't know. I I mean, <laughs> there's no chance he comes back, right? No chance, dude. There can't be. All right. Yeah. I mean, um, that would be like I, that. Honestly, dude, I think that'd probably be a bigger deal. You come back <laughs> or pick the last guy that was come back. Yeah. I mean, dude, that would be insane. That'd be, that's gonna be Peyton Manning type situation. Remember? I mean, Peyton Manning was the last big time guy. I feel like that came back. Um, so look, man, this is it. This is it for Carolina football in the Drake May era, which is some of the most fun football. We've been really, really lucky with the last two, really three QBs. I mean, Mitch was a great college quarterback. Sam was probably better. And then Drake, I think is better than those guys. And you know, this is it. I don't even know who the hell the next guy is. I don't, I don't follow recruit and I just care when you show up. Right. But, uh, we've, we've been fortunate. To, to watch Drake May and uh, so it's it's a tough game because it's Thanksgiving and everybody's you know, ain't nobody gonna be there but you know hopefully our our fans show up and show out because we gotta we gotta rally behind them if they are gonna be there they're gonna be exhausted uh, oh yeah I mean Thanksgiving we play on Friday right so Thanksgiving's that Thursday oh yeah it's gonna be a lot of food destroyed you know some people go on these benders mm-hmm. they just kind of show up uh, it can happen man holidays can get the best of you and also it's it's balking season I can't uh, and I tell you, you can't I don't know what double sleep uh, <laughs> hey man uh, I don't know how to respond to that um, I look like a my pillow uh, <laughs> both before and after the damn Thanksgiving so so I don't know what's gonna be more stressful my Thanksgiving or watching the Carolina game because that game is going to stress me out and I'm probably going to have to like, like the Clemson game, the reason I didn't catch much of the, I, I like, and the Duke game, I had to do the same thing, like for my own mental health. Like I had to take a couple breaks in, in between watching it. But, uh, dude, we're doing Thanksgiving in my house and I got both families going to be here. 11 people. Are you cooking? I am not cooking. My pregnant wife is cooking. Oh. So it was her idea. I'm trying to be supportive. Um, I am being supportive. I, dude, I my back hurts. I've been blowing leaves. I live in Raleigh, guys. You guys ain't ever been to Raleigh from out of town. I mean, dude, oak trees in Raleigh, it's like snow in Aspen, bro. I mean, I've been blowing leaves. There are more Ace Hardware bags of leaves. There's like 30 of them outside. You bag the leaves? I bag, dude. That's what you're supposed to do. I dude, am, you got to burn them. No, well, we can't do, buddy. I blew the leaves yesterday. I'm joking, okay, guys, and I looked like I looked like I was in the damn <laughs> middle of the Arizona desert in a dust storm. I mean, there was just, the whole whole neighborhood was covered in dust because I was blowing leaves, and it's been so dry. Right, I had like dirt in my nose, and um. So anyway, we got them all blown up because like there's not enough room inside my house for everybody to be inside next to each other for however long they're going to be here. So I'm trying to like, did Kentucky win? 
No, they're in overtime. They're down. Oh. St. Joe's is down three with 45, 86, 89. I don't Oof. think they're going to do it. Kentucky ball. Um, so, sleep. you know, hey. having them all in. My parents are the most so, stressful. Anyway. S- sleep, you're actually a pretty good cook. We did the Friendsgiving one time over at my place. And oh, yeah. uh, I will tell you, guys, there ain't no way I'm ever cooking a turkey again. Uh, not a chance. I didn't know you had to season the thing for like two days. And I went out and bought like this plastic cooler. And then you had to take the turkey, put it outside. Uh I think you you put it in ice and then you, yeah. Uh, You just don't know you had to take it out of the ice. And so I was taking the plastic cooler from my, from my kitchen, walking it through the living room. Thing just shattered. Right there. Just got everything <laughs> on the floor. They had to go buy another cooler, and uh, it was a disaster. And uh, the one time, the other time I had family over Thanksgiving was I was playing in Indiana, and I went to Whole Foods. I was like, hey, do you guys sell turkeys? They're like, yeah, you can get a whole turkey, everything. So I was cooked. like, all right, good. I need one. $100. <laughs> so, so it's expensive, organic, all good turkey. Yeah. Yeah. I go to pick it up the day of Thanksgiving, I think. That thing was frozen. I said, oh, what do you mean? Boy. It's not cooked? So uh, <laughs> we had dinner. It takes like about three days to have a... <laughs> Listen, sleep. Hey, your Thanksgiving is be much better than the one I had in Indy. Believe me. And uh, sleep can actually cook. For all you listeners out there, sleep's brought over some dishes over at my place. Well, we had Thanksgiving that that were real good and so uh don't sleep on sleeps cooking i can't cook like dan but i can cook like staple stuff and the trick with the trick with the turkey in addition to thawing it out is you have to create you know whatever you want to season it with fucking butter a uh but you have to put on like a glove like a like a latex glove or i mean you're a serial killer if you do this without the glove but you have to (laughs) You have to put what your your mix in between the skin and the meat. You have to like reach in and like rub this turkey. It's like the weirdest thing, but you season it inside the skin, like right on the meat. Okay, remember to take the bag of the gizzards and shit out, right? And if you do it that way, and then you baste it as it's in there, it's not really that hard. And like people use beer and whatever, like. Whatever it takes to brown the thing. But like that's how you keep moisture in a turkey is you don't put it on the outside because what happens if you put it on the outside is all you do is burn the damn skin and you got to cook the <laughs> living shit out of it and it dries it out, right? So you just put it up uh-huh. under there. So that's the trick there. Um, then, of course, it's like you're, the biggest challenge in cooking, especially Thanksgiving, is like how in god's name to get all this shit out at the same time is the right temperature right because you get your mashed potatoes out and you're like all right now i'm gonna put this casserole in for 45 minutes well you put that casserole in for 45 minutes those mashed potatoes are gonna be cold i don't care mm-hmm. how much tinfoil you put over right so that's kind of yep. the trick and then if you put two things in the oven at the same time see this is the first time look my wife volunteered to cook all this stuff so i'm not real sure whether that means i just stay out of it or you know i'm just, just gonna try to be on my best behavior and limit my uh you know, snide remarks because, you know, she's like, literally, this is like the Olympics. I mean, I'm oh. sending her to the Olympics. Okay. <laughs> um, but it, she's a she, dude. She's a great cook. So everything's going to be good. But she's no, the most you. critic is like, she's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry if this isn't good. It's like, bro, I have been doing absolutely nothing except drinking brewskis all day, watching football. It's fine. You know, you, I mean, you know I'm, what I do sleep. If I'm you, I call my mom, my dad. The rest of my family on my side, unless I say, listen, <laughs> this is going to be the best damn turkey you've ever eaten in your life. Okay. And if any of you guys complain, I'm not talking to you for six months, <laughs> six months, you're on probation, silent treatment from me. This is going to be the best meal you've ever had in your ever. life, period. Everything that you eat today is going to be amazing. You're just going to feed us compliments on how good it is. Okay. Understand? Yeah. You want to see this grandkid? You want to see this kid ever? Like this is the best food you've ever had. <laughs> that's great uh, advice that's great advice what all right here we go so it's kind of like thanksgiving stresses everybody the hell out everybody i don't care who you are um i'm stressed about it already and ain't even here yet and i'm excited about it you know it's like it's a fun time like you just can't wait i can't wait for the in-laws to come i can't wait for 
my parents come. My parents are the biggest pain in the ass, right? <laughs> um, and it's like I can't wait. Um, oh, dude, I'm watching this. Uh, speaking of, I'm going. We're taking them all on. So we're doing. We're actually doing Thanksgiving on due to some scheduling on Saturday and on Friday night. I'm taking them all to the Alamo to watch Napoleon. Uh, commercial just came on. Anyway, uh, got to keep them occupied like kids. Uh, couple things that are very controversial about Thanksgiving, in addition to family. Christmas music and food, the the like selection. Mm-hmm. So let's go with the food first. Give me a top five, dude. Give me a top five. I guess it can be the same thing we do with the Tar Heels here. It can be anything. It's your list, but I need to know, like, what does the big hawk got to have on the on the uh, on the damn I Thanksgiving? Mean, turkey is like universal, right? Yeah, turkey. I mean, turkey, and then what about yams? I mean, I think that's under, you know, candy yams, that's underrated. Some type of casserole, broccoli casserole, I don't care, mashed potato ca- a casserole. It has to be a casserole. There's three. Okay, and I'm going to add, it's not going to be able, we're not going to be able to condense this thing down to top five. A pecan <laughs> pie, okay. mandatory. Pumpkin pie, mandatory. And this is a sleeper sleep. Here's the honorable mention. This is the one thing that not a lot of people, it's cherry pie Mm -hmm. and it's warm cherry pie. Okay. And what you do is not a lot of people put this out on Thanksgiving, but my uncle Corby, shout out to him. He did this. Shout out Uncle Corby. He brought cherry pie. He warmed it up in the oven. I don't know if it's because my pecan pie and my pumpkin pie were just so bad that he went out and bought one, <laughs> but he did, and it happened to be a cherry pie. He warmed that thing up, and he got vanilla ice cream to come with it. Uh-huh. And once that cherry pie is like on the border of being hot and warm, okay? It's like we, coffee. We I feel it. like it's got to be coffee. Yes. Like You take a first bite, you take a first sip of coffee, it's like, oh, well, shit, I ain't tasting nothing else the rest of the week. Yeah. That's how and hot so it's got to it, be. Exactly, sleep. Then you take, I don't know, four or five scoops of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> and once again, guys, this is balking season, okay? You can't sculpt the pebble. <laughs> Keep that in mind when you're eating. Don't even worry about the scale, uh-uh. okay? We're seeing that uh-uh. thing January, February. That's a New That's Year's right, resolution, baby. okay? That's right. It'll call once it a the holidays resolution. is over. <laughs> and so we would put that ice cream right on top of the cherry pie, and you just go at it. And that is like a ribbon to what everything you just that's just like capping off Thanksgiving. All right. And you're moving right on into Christmas and don't even think about putting Christmas music on, uh, during Thanksgiving that could, that can only happen at midnight when we're okay. making the transition from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Okay. My mom's already got the tree out. She's already done the lights. I'm like, you know, we're, we're doing Thanksgiving first. Uh, sleep. What you got? What's your top five? Dude. Uh, man, if you are still breathing, comfortably after you eat then that's a sign you need to keep eating at thanksgiving okay so aside from the cherry pie that is the most like safest bet i've list i've ever heard you said turkey yams casserole like you didn't have to pick one here's the deal (laughs) turkey's gonna be there already like if you ain't having turkey like you know unless you're like against it or something like that like something's wrong with you so here's the thing dude it's a broccoli and cheese casserole a like mm. period okay yep my mom made this stuff and i can make it now it's pretty easy to do you just lots of butter and lots of sweet potato sweet potato crunch dude you puree sweet potatoes right with butter shitload of butter brown sugar and then you put like pecans and brown sugar on top and it's like oh uh, it's pretty good uh so i'm going with that it's, i guess it's sort of like a casserole itself mashed potatoes dude if you ain't got mashed potatoes and gravy okay because like a lot of families you know mashed potatoes you eat during the year fine but like the gravy is like at least where i come from my mom was like man i don't made the mashed potatoes i ain't making any damn gravy but on thanksgiving you get the gravy so like mashed potatoes gravy broccoli cheese casserole i'll do this i'll go with this sweet potato crunch look man this is the thing too, like when you're a kid, there's like a certain age. I think you truly become an adult, not when you can go to war, not when you can buy a beer, not when you get your driver's license. I mean, not only, not even when you can rent a car, you officially become an adult <clears throat> because it happens in the blink of an eye the moment you start to like stuffing. 
because, dude, stuffing tastes like absolute dog shit until that day comes when you put it, when you take a bite of it and you're like, this is the best shit I've ever had. Like, this is like bread mushed together with like all the other stuff, right? Stuffing Mm -hmm. is is really good. And that's like, that is a quintessential Thanksgiving thing. Like, maybe you get that at Christmas, but that shit ain't, ain't nobody eating stuffing in July. Right. Um, so that and then, dude, here it is for me. It is the damn. The what the hell is it? Ocean spray cranberry sauce It's the cranberry sauce in the can. Don't give me any of the shit with the cranberries and like somebody. I, if it ain't shaped like the can with the ridges in it. It ain't cranberry sauce, dude, the jellied cranberry sauce, you take it. You open the can and you just shake the can until it comes out in a cylinder and you just cut it into slices and you just mow it down. I mean, if you so if you don't have that, don't invite me. OK, have you ever had the candied cranberry sauce in the can? I'm blown. I have no, I have no clue what you're talking about. Oh, my God, dude. What it is, is this? It, if, if you put a gun to my head and said, do you want turkey or do you want? cranberry sauce out of the can you can take a turkey and shove it up your ass sideways give me the cranberry sauce dude i'm telling you and it's got to be cold man you got to put it in the refrigerator you don't just don't be giving that lukewarm shit don't give that room temperature you pull it right out of the fridge deviled eggs too man gotta have deviled eggs that's my honorable Ooh. mention but that cranberry sauce dude i'm telling you buddy the shit's underrated sleep do you do a lot of people gonna back sauce? me up on that Oh, it is basic. It is basic. It's not even really sauce. It's kind of like Jello with a texture. Um, It's sweet as hell. God knows how much sugar's in it. Uh, It's slightly bitter. You know how 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 cranberries are just just a touch bitter. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, wow. Do you eat that with the turkey, or you just eat it solo? Well. Either one, man. And you can get it mixed up in the mashed potatoes. It can get, see, the thing about the cranberry sauce is it can get anything on it. It can get gravy on it, still good. It can get cherry pie on it, man, even better. It can get pumpkin pie on it, solid. Stuffing, no no worries. That's, yeah, turkey. Oh, yeah. Ham, spiral ham. Oops, like got them all mixed up. Yep, no problem. Broccoli cheese casserole, a little devil in there. Yep, fine. Right? You can't say that about everything on the table. Big bread guy, too. I mean, guys, look, I'm going to be. If I'm not in cardiac arrest by first thing Friday morning, I haven't eaten enough. I'm gluten so I'm intolerant. Gluten. <laughs> oh, buddy, I'm very tolerant. <laughs> I'm going on. <laughs> Man, I'm joking, guys. Listen, I uh, always find it funny when someone says, is it gluten free? Um, uh, sleep, I'm going to hit you up about this cranberry sauce. Dude, I'm telling it out. you. It's gonna guys, be my addition. Yeah, let me see what the. Hang on, man. I got to know the. It's a white can. I know it is like I, I can't believe. I'm really disappointed in myself that I don't know the the brand name, but I'm going to look it up here on the If you had to get rid of one traditional dish, it would be the it would be the uh the ham. I'm out on the ham. Yeah, I think uh I really like ham. Um cranberry sauce in a can. There we go. Which one is it? Ocean spray. It is ocean spray. Yeah. All right. I got to get ocean it. Ocean spray it. jellied cranberry sauce, dude. And basically what you do is you put that in the refrigerator. You need to get one now because it's like, I mean, make it cold. I don't know about you, but like I, when I eat fruit, like apple or something, I like to keep them in the refrigerator because I All just right. like cold fruit. But man, you hit that cranberry, that jelly cranberry. When we come back here next week, I want to know your thoughts on it. How many um, cans should I get? Uh, how many people are going to be there? Let's say eight. Well, I know you're, I know Greg pretty well. Oh, he's one to himself, two. Greg's going to mow it down. Okay, so at least Greg's two. Greg's going to take it out. <laughs> my, my, I'd say, hey, I'd don't, say don't underestimate Benno either. He'll take three or four yeah. down if he likes it. Dollar ninety eight at Walmart. Go ahead and get you a little flat of them. Get you about six cans. All right, done. Six will do it. Six will do it. Now I want to know what you think, man, because God, right. I grew up on that shit. I will update you guys. 
Christmas Anybody, music. Everybody else out there, you got to go get this ocean spray. Uh, ocean spray, sauce. yeah, ocean spray jelly cranberry sauce. We're gonna cut a clip of this and put it on social media. I need to know because I got a feeling this is gonna be pretty divisive because cranberry sauce people get a little cutthroat over that shit. Some people have got their own little recipe and it's got like legitimate cranberries in it. And it's like you ever go somewhere and there's like a staple food that you see and you're like, I know I don't like. Like some people don't like deviled eggs. And I don't, yeah, I love deviled eggs, but like there's a few things that like. You know, people make and you're like, mm -mm, nah, you didn't do that right. I don't want any of this. And that's one of them. Cranberry sauce. Don't ever do it. Um, and the Christmas music, dude. God bless, man. What do you think? I mean, the next day, bro. It, it's, look, it's never the right time for Christmas music. Christmas morning, I don't want to listen to Christmas music. Really? I hate it. What is go-to Christmas song, though? I'll, I'll, I'll try to think <laughs> it's been my favorite song ever since I was a little kid. I like the little drummer boy. But up a dump dump. Oh man. You know, I like it all. Man. I like the sympathy or Police <laughs> sympathy. La -da. sympathy. Yeah. Um, Damn, dude. That's a good one. That's a good that's I don't even know what uh see the department stores used to always play the Mariah Carey one, and I'm not gonna lie. When I was I don't know what how old I was, but I was like nine when that album came out. Mariah Carey's Christmas album, very strong, bro. I put, I had it on cassette tape, banger, and I'm just heat after heat. And you know, all I want for Christmas is you. It gets all the credit. I mean, you could listen to that whole album start to finish over and over again. Just Mariah just had pipes, dude. Christmas Sleep. pipes. You know, when that song used to just be legendary. When we were in college, I don't oh, think God. you were ever here during Christmas break, but oh uh, yeah, the was. bars just okay. Good, you know when the <laughs> bars closed down, they always put that all I want for Christmas. The Mariah Carey and it was like a pop off. Oh, players. dude, it was just a banger. Just holy oh, grail yeah. of Christmas with Santa hat. Least favorite. <laughs> least favorite. Least favorite. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lisa, I don't even. Who gives a shit? They're all. all you don't like Christmas songs. music? Nah, dude. Christmas music sucks, dude. Dude, the whole. It's all a ruse, man. Like Black Friday. Do you go out? Look. Oh God, I almost forgot, guys. See, this is why we just ramble because Sleep, every now Black and then, Friday, you know? dude. Every now and then we stumble on a diamond. So my oh, mom God. is one of those people that like adds S to every store, right? And, and they're coming Thanksgiving. They're coming on Thanksgiving Day. And, you know, we're doing a whole thing. And my mom says, hey, do you have a Costco's membership? And I'm like, yeah, of course I do. Um, Black card, as a matter of fact, not trying to brag or anything. And uh, she goes, well, I don't have one. Will you take me there on Friday? And without thinking, I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take you there. Oh, God. So I go, okay, good. And then I'm like, my dad goes, you're going to take her there on Black Friday? I was like, oh, shit. I was like, immediately rescinded that invitation. My mom <clears throat> wants me to take her to Costco on Black Friday. And she said, well, I'm not, and this is the kicker. I was like, well, do they have something there that you want. She said, well, I'm just thinking they might have some deals. And oh. I was like, mom, if you would uh, do me a favor, uh, next time you're uh, near the... Uh, nearest uh computer machine why don't you do me a favor and go to the keyboard and type www.costco.com and uh maybe shop for any deals they may be having because i'm sure their little flyer or whatever has been out for an eon at this point and it's like black friday people trip me out because the people stampede each other over a acer 27 inch tv 480p and a playstation 3 it's like, I mean, I get it if you're going to get like the one guy that's going to get a, you know, new bicycle or something. I don't know what the hell it is. And they've always got like the new toy. Dude, no, I'm not going to Black Friday ever in my entire life. Sleep, I might have to do it this year. I'm out there. You know, I've, I've got some. You're going to be in KY time. out there? I'm going to be in Kentucky. And listen, I'm going to Walmart. Okay, I'm going to get a deal on a TV. Okay, period. Uh, not a big TV. I just need a small TV. I want to. Sub, I want to see you at like WTKY 11 Kentucky Louisville or wherever the hell, like storming through 
the push the sliding glass door. Listen, I don't care who's in front of me. Okay, if there's five <laughs> TVs left, and I have to stamp stampede to get the fifth TV. I'm getting the TV I want. I already have it jotted down. Okay, I'm gonna be gonna pry out of some child's hands. Oh, I'm gonna be there 11:50. Okay, I'm gonna be there 11:50. I don't care. Black Friday, anything goes. All society has no morals. They have no – there is nothing that makes sense, okay? This is a survival of the fittest out there, okay? If you see a deal, you better get it. There's I don't care games. what happens or what stands in front of you. You will get that TV or you will get the bike or you will get the toy that your kid's been talking about for about a year now at about a 40% discount. I don't care if you've got to ruin your, your – Big R's going to leave with an iPhone SE and a skateboard and a uh, <laughs> fucking <laughs> and a trampoline and a Wal- Walmart credit card for 10% less than you could get at any other day of the year. Like, just go on Amazon. And, buy- and here's the deal, guys, because Sleep Dog Moonlights as a shipping guy, I'm telling you, just go ahead and buy y'all shit now. If you wait till Christmas, and people do this every year, you wait till it gets close to Christmas, man. It ain't getting there. I got news for you. You're going to have to lie to your kids, tell them Santa Claus' sleigh broke down and shit. Um, so just do yourself a favor. But, dude, you ain't catching me dead. The only way you would catch me a Black Friday is to promote Sleep Hog Worldwide. Like, one day you want me to come with you, I'll go to sleep. I'll go to Black Friday just so we can. <clears throat> but, dude, you better go line up now. I mean, people are nuts. And, like, stuff started opening on Thanksgiving night. And people, uh, people so, for Black Friday. I mean, the store opens like four in the morning. People are camping out like now. I'm, I'm ready. I'll, I'll, I'm right. going to go there. I'm going to document it. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to also look around for some deals as well. Once I grab that TV, oh, I'm going to put it in the cart. I'm going to put my put my guard down a little bit. Unless someone gets close to that TV in my cart, then I will go. Ham. That TV will uh, be broke but, by next Christmas too. That's the best part. <laughs> You'll be right back where you started. Well, then I have to go to another Black Friday and get another deal. Well, guys, if you get your order, your Jimmy Seafood order in, because you're going to be sick of turkey, dude. All that food we talked about, that's the other thing. Leftovers good for the day after. Then you start getting into like, damn, I really want to reheat this shit again come Saturday and all that sort of stuff. So hit up Jimmy's, man. That gets you some crab mm-hmm. cakes. I mean, give you a good variety because ain't nobody eating crab cakes on things you should be. But they got, they got uh, hell, I'm I bet you they send some. you Thanksgiving thing. My dad, I'm gonna get I'm gonna that's get what I'm getting my dad for Christmas. They mm-hmm. ship those some bitches too, and they're good. Uh, anyway, man, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. You got anything else, Big Hawk? Stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs> <laughs>